Hello everyone. Today in this beam we are going to make the expressions for the slope and deflection using conjugate beam method. This is a simply supported beam subjected to a clockwise concentrated moment M in the right support. The span of the beam is given as L. This beam we have already analyzed for shear force and bending moment diagrams. Also we have found the expressions for the slope and deflection using conjugate beam method. If you wanted to know how these reactions and how this bending moment diagram comes, you have to click the link in the description below and watch the video. The bending moment diagram will be in the shape of a triangle and it will be negative. This is the conjugate beam. Since the bending moment diagram of the real beam is negative, let us keep the loading in the conjugate beam downwards. We have to divide the moment by EI. To find RA dash, let us take moment about B dash. In this case, we have to follow right hand side rule. RA dash is acting in the clockwise direction, so positive, and the distance is L. The UVL is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so negative. For the UVL we have to multiply the area with the centroid distance. We know the area formula of a triangle half into BH. Here this is the breadth and this is the height. So this is the area and the centroid distance about B dash is 1 upon 3 into breadth. Here the breadth is L. So this is the centroid distance. For RA dash we will get ML upon 6 EI. Using this rule, we can find RB dash. Both of the reactions are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. The UVL is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For the UVL, we have to take the area. For RB dash, we will get ML upon 3 EI. Using the right hand side rule, let us find the shear force at A dash. This reaction is acting upwards, so it will be positive. Using the left hand side rule, let us find the shear force at B dash. This is acting upwards, so it will be negative. We know that these two are the slopes in the real beam, in the point A and in the point B respectively. In the conjugate beam, let us make a section xx at a distance of x from A dash. We have to find this height. For the distance of L, the height is m upon EI. So for L, it is m upon EI. But we need the height at the distance of x. So we have to multiply with the x. In this way we will get the height as mx upon lei. Using the right hand side rule let us take a moment about the section. This reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so positive and the distance is x. The uvl is acting in the anti-clockwise direction so it will be negative. Let us take this uh, triangle. The area formula is half into bh. Here the breadth is x and this is the height. So this is the area. The centroid distance about the section is 1 upon 3 into the breadth which is x. From these two we can take m upon 6 EI outside. We know that this is the expression to find the deflection at any point of the real beam. Now we are going to find the maximum deflection. First we need to find the location where it occurs. The deflection will be maximum when the slope is 0. From this equation we can find the slope equation. We have to differentiate this one with respect to x. For x it will be 1. When we differentiate x cube it will be 3x square. We can take this term on the other side it will come inversely. When we multiply that with 0 it will be 0. We can take this term on the other side it will come as positive. For x we will get L upon root 3. Now let us find the maximum deflection. In this one instead of x we have to apply L upon root 3. Instead of x cube we can write x square into x. For x square we can apply this and for x we can apply this. Here also we can apply this. We can eliminate this L. From these two terms we can take L square upon root 3 outside. 1 minus 1 upon 3 it will be 2 upon 3. We can eliminate 2. Here it will be 3. 3 into 3 it will be 9. For the maximum deflection we will get a positive expression. That means the deflection occurs upwards. To find the deflection on the midpoint, instead of x, we have to apply L upon 2. x cube will be L upon 2, the whole power cube, so it will be L cube upon 8. After simplifying, we will get this expression. Here you can see the elastic curve. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.